guys so I know there was a little bit of a lapse for a couple weeks where I was gone in Italy I honestly didn't really vlog too much or go live um, but I honestly just kind of like really just wanted to enjoy my time there I kind of did something similar when I had my Germany Austria and Switzerland trip but uh, this trip I just really just kind of wanted to soak up just the ambiance, um, even though it wasn't like a beach trip, um, it was kind of like a getaway and we honestly had just moved. And then when we came back, we had finalized changing our names and just like so much had gone on um, from the time that uh, we closed on our house, which was so up, on the, up in the air for so many different reasons. It's in another video <laughs> if you'd like to check it out. Um, but our, we, after we finished moving all of our stuff over from our apartment to our new house, um, we had, I believe, like two weeks, two weeks or one, two weeks or one week. I think it was two weeks or one week. No, two weeks. So, no. Okay, so we had two weeks from the time that our movers came over, which I believe was around like August 7th, and our trip, I think, was on like August 23rd. So by the time um, our lease was up, like we'd be on a plane to Italy. So um, when we moved, <laughs> when we moved everything, we still had a lot of things we were moving ourselves that included valuables, you know, things like that, that we just preferred to move ourselves. The movers cost a pretty penny. He did. Um, more than I was expecting because we hired two guys instead of three. Um, but to anyone watching, it was still so well worth the money. Like, you don't realize how much stuff, for one, you've accumulated, and two, like, my husband and I have moved so many times, you know, over the last several years, the last 10, 15 years, we've moved like six, seven times. So, you know, we kind of had been through it with, you know, moving ourselves so many years and, you know, hurting ourselves, our relatives like hurting their backs and stuff like that. Um, and just honestly, I prefer it just because, I don't know, I mean, people can be unreliable, especially, you know, if you're not paying them. You know, if something's come up and they're like, oh, I'm sorry, I can't make it, you know, then you're kind of like on your own. And even now with like COVID and everything, you have to book out your movers like in advance, at least a week. We did two weeks. We got our movers um, and then they don't charge you until um, once everything is moved. Um, we used a Sacramento Moving Company. You know, if you want to check them out, you're local to the area and you need their services. I definitely really like them. Um, I we tip well. Um, I know some people provide food and stuff like that. We didn't even eat until after everything. So what we did is we just tipped them very generously, uh, the 15%, I believe, on top of their rate. Um, so it was well worth it um, it was a long day still we had to wait for them we kind of instructed them where to put things you know things that they we wanted them to take all that good stuff um, nothing was damaged again so <laughs> well worth the money and then we took about a week after that to slowly migrate everything else that we had to move over which is our personal stuff our valuables and any other random stuff we had a lot just because as i said closing was so up in the air that we didn't we weren't entirely packed because we weren't sure if it was going to close and especially in this market you don't know how long it's going to take so it's not really realistic for us to have a ton of boxes stacked up in our living room inside a one bedroom apartment where you don't have a garage or anything so um it was a lot of last minute packing so there's just a lot of things that we had to bring over gradually and then a week I believe a week after that is when we left for Italy uh, we so we had like kind of a week of a breather time but it was such a pain to have to pull everything out of boxes for our trip and try and find everything that we needed oh my gosh it, would that be considered organized or disorganized chaos probably disorganized chaos we're still on boxes this is the beginning of October filming this video because we do also both work full time and you know so between our trip working full time and all this and moving it's just taken a long time. I still haven't really like decorated and I really would love to do that but I'm limited to like the weekends so it's just like oh you know one thing at a time. So 
Um, our Italy trip was actually quite fun. Things were for the most part pretty open. Um, you know, despite COVID, the protocol was very similar to here, although they were more strict about it. Um, for example, you had to either you know, have like the, a QR code, uh, which is called a green pass there, um, or show uh, either on your phone or a picture of your um, COVID vaccination card uh, to either dine inside or to go inside like on a tour, you had to have that. Um, so keep that in mind, you know, if, you're, if you have any Europe trips coming up. We have an Asia trip that was originally supposed to happen this November, but it was postponed, <laughs> you know, because of everything going on. Um, so <laughs> there may be a part two of this video because my camera's almost dying. So I may have to come back later. So yeah, so the COVID protocol, you know, is pretty similar, but to, you know, if you want to go on an inside tour, inside eating, had to show your vaccination card. Um, and I honestly, like, I preferred the food a little bit more when I was in Germany, Austria, and Switzerland. Um, you know, you had more variety, especially at the breakfasts at the hotels. Uh, I believe we stayed at three-star hotels um, the entire time. Um, the beds were standard. I remember in Germany, like, they were really, like, kind of small, um, like, twin beds, like, next to each other. Um, so it was really interesting just, like, seeing the differences. Um, and I think I honestly, yeah, like I said, I prefer the food just at the restaurants there, too. But um, my husband, he really loved it. He told me, he's like, I could, like, live here and not get tired of the food, but, like, for me, like, I'm just so used to the versatility. I honestly have a hard time imagining living anywhere where I eat the same thing every day. Like, by the end of the nine days we spent there, I was like, I'm done with pizza and pasta. Like, it was good while we were there, but I'm like, I'm done. And I think the best food that we had was when we were staying in Rome. They had this penne arrabbiata. It was so good. It was inexpensive. Italy as a whole was generally less expensive than it was in Germany, Austria, and Switzerland. Um, I got a huge plate of <laughs> arrabbiata for like seven euros, which even though the euro is more expensive than the US dollar, it was such a good deal for that portion size. Um, a lot of restaurants also don't do takeaway, and a lot of restaurants often have a surcharge um, that they automatically add on the bill. You don't necessarily have to tip unless you want to. It is um, um, it is appreciated but not required uh, like it is here in the States. And I know when people come to the States, it's been jarring because in a lot of other countries, they don't have <laughs> the tipping system. Or in some places, it's con even considered rude. Um, so just the FYI, and um, we honestly got around pretty easily just by walking, uh, by taking uh, the train, bus, um, very easy to get around. Um, little, like, for the most part, a, a lot of people do understand to some degree of English. So unfortunately, I had to take a bit of a break there because my camera died. Surprise, surprise. Only thing I don't like about shooting on a camera versus my phone, but it's too much of a pain to get the footage off my phone if you're getting a new phone. FYI, I think I mentioned this in another video. But um, so yeah, the a good chunk of people in Italy do speak English, not to the same degree as Germany. And I think that's because uh, like Germany is a business hub and it's really pushed harder there uh, for business purposes. Um, but like you could still get around, um, you know, we understood the Euro from our previous trip. That was pretty easy and straightforward. Um, you know, we, we're able to actually use our credit cards most of the time. Uh, and generally Italy in the past, like, I mean, there, there still were places where we had to um, only, you know, we could only use cash, but for the most part, we're able to use a card, and I kind of prefer that because I actually just got the Chase uh, Sapphire uh, Reserve, um, which is a really awesome travel credit card with all kinds of benefits. So, um, you know, let me know down below if you want me to do a video on that. Um, but I was really happy with it. So, uh, we went to Rome. I probably should have prefaced this, but we went to Rome, uh, Florence. 
in Venice. Um, I think Rome was honestly my favorite, but I really did like Venice too. I mean, uh, uh, Florence. Uh, I love Florence for their shopping district. They had a lot of really awesome shops. I even found the boba places. Maybe I'll insert some pictures. <laughs> but I found like two or three different boba places in the time we were in Italy. I didn't see anything in Venice. It was more of a like seaside town um, where you would kind of get everywhere by a uh, boat taxi or a gondola ride. Um, and then, oh, another reason to pack light is um, you, it's just not very, it's not very wheelchair friendly because you have to go up these like little step hills, like these little bridges. Um, so we, it, with each of us having two packs of luggage and like a backpack, had to lug them up and over. So that was kind of challenging and you know, between cities we would get on a train. Our last trip was all inclusive, so we were on a coach bus most of the time, so we had people who would transport the luggage, which is honestly why I, I think I liked our last trip a little bit more. Don't get me wrong, I had a blast, um, but there were some pros and cons to both. I mean, there's pros to, of course, you know, having your own itinerary, you know, being on your own schedule versus having the schedule of an all-inclusive you know, tour package. It's all, you know, the tour package is also more expensive, but I preferred it just because, um, even though I'm not a morning person, you had to get up early for these things. You know, they had people like transporting your, your luggage for you and stuff like that. Um, you know, and there were days that we spent while in Italy while we tried to figure out things to do. Um, a couple things that we saw were the Roman Colosseum and then, um, the Vatican. Those were like the biggest highlight, uh, highlights. The Vatican and uh, the Roman Colosseum. Um, to be honest, and let me know down below what you guys think. Um, I'm not a major like history tour type person. Like I go along because you know everyone else. Like oh you know it's just something that you do while you're in this place. Um, I really enjoyed seeing the Colosseum, but as far as like the history and even the history of the Vatican, I know makes me sound like a terrible person. I'm just not, I've never really been that much into history. I, I get a little bored after a while. Um, I just kind of prefer, I don't know. Um, I mean, I like just like trying the food, having the ambience, just exploring the culture. But as far as like the historical tours, I just kind of go along with it just to say I did pretty much. <laughs> I often don't really retain the information. But um, yeah, so in, in this instance, I mean, we were able to, you know, kind of slow down a little bit, sleep in, and kind of go on our own schedule, but there's a lot of sometimes aimless wandering around, figuring out what to do. Um, you know, um, there, was a, there was one point where I forgot my driver's license in the, the hotel, because <laughs> one place was checking it along with your vaccination card. So if you are traveling anytime soon, definitely make sure you, you have all that. But the trip was off to a little bit of a rocky start and that was because when we flew out of SFO, um, you know, they, you know, some of the year requirements were, um, that we actually know that I think Italy is actually allowing both, uh, vaccinated and non-vaccinated, uh, travelers. But I think if you are not vaccinated, they do require you to do a COVID test for, I think 72 hours before 72 to 48 hours. Yeah. 48 to 72 hours before. Um, so when we got there, my husband presented his COVID card. He had actually misplaced the first one. So on the second one, they wrote in on there that he had received his first vaccination and then like their little thing for the second one. But the TSA person would not accept it. And the, we were flying out at 8 a.m. And the rapid COVID testing on site did not open <laughs> until our flight left. So he was uh, delayed by a day, which really was honestly quite a bummer. <laughs> um, so he could have done, stayed around the day, take, take in the rapid COVID test, which was over a hundred dollars there, so much more expensive. But what he ended up doing was he took um, an Uber back to my, to my dad's house and got in our car and then drove home Sacramento, which was two hours. So he drove all the way home, took an Uber to Santa Clara and like 45 minutes there and then took another, you know, drove another two hours home. 
to locate the first card because the second one, even though they wrote in that he received his first vaccination, wasn't sufficient. And for some reason on the site, like it wasn't loading his information, um, they would not accept a photocopy of it. So just to FYI, the TSA people won't accept like a picture, but you know, when we were in Italy, like going into, um, going inside the restaurants or inside for tours, like 99% of the time, you know, a picture was fine. Um, preferably, you know, having your, your COVID card because you just never know. It depends on the place, how uh, stringent they are. But it was actually really nice because normally it's a very peak travel season for Italy during the time that we went, um, you know, late August. Um, <clears throat> but it was not <laughs> that busy. Um, it really wasn't. It was quite nice. Um, so it was just really cool. Um, and I didn't really do a whole lot of, I did, you know, I did a couple clips and stuff like that, but I didn't really do like a whole lot in the way of vlogging just cause I just kind of wanted to savor the experience and after everything with the move and I just didn't want to add that <laughs> stress, but I just figured I'd come on and just tell you guys about my experience. Um, but I think Rome was my first favorite and, um, Next time I go to Italy, I'd love to see like Sicily. I think that's where a lot of my family members, my ancestors and stuff were from. So I'd love to see more of Southern Italy, uh, as well as uh, Pisa, which was only like an hour away from where we're staying in, uh, in Florence. <laughs> so I felt like there was a little bit of a missed opportunity, but hopefully next time. And, um, but yeah, we took trains in between the cities. Um, and it was like a two hour, bullet train type ride um wasn't very long at all um the, the second time when we went from florence to venice it was kind of a pain because we we're lugging all of our suitcases on and we had assigned seating and we were in like the very back part of the car where we should have been up front so like trying to lug it in between seats and down the aisles oh my gosh while what, the train was moving and let me tell you they don't mess around. They leave right on time, whether you're on the train or not. They don't stop looking for you. You need to be on there on time early. <laughs> Make sure that you get there on time. Um, so, yeah, so that was, um, it was interesting. There is some, like, you know, a little frustration when you travel in groups, you know. There's also pros and cons to that, too, because, you know, you kind of have to compromise with, you know, the other people that you're with and, you know, try and do everything you know some things that you know people want to do some things you want to do you know just to kind of compromise but overall we had a really good time my husband ended up meeting us the next day when he flew in e even after like having to drive all the way back home and drive all the way back to the airport the next day and thankfully he didn't really miss too much because our first day was just kind of hanging out just kind of um you know taking things in just kind of like getting over the jet lag and stuff like that but yeah, my dad was actually talking about going to like a beer event uh, in Germany in March, which is our other trip plan for next year, as well as a few other things. We have Hawaii coming up and we want to go to Oregon and maybe take another trip down to SoCal and coming up in like spring. So I don't think we're going to have enough vacation time. So yeah, I just wanted to come up and tell you guys a little bit. About my Italy trip, um, I think on, what's next on my bucket list as far as Europe would be to check out Tripmasters. But this is a really awesome website where you can pretty much build your own itinerary. Um, you know, as I said, there's pros and cons to having an all-inclusive versus not. I think overwhelmingly people prefer to build their own itinerary. And I think it's, I'm going to try this because it's also less expensive. But you can you have the option to add on tours. With this website, I was watching another gal's video about it, and um, you know, you can add on hotels. Um, it actually builds a package for you. It adds on the hotel, it adds on your train transfers, your flights, um, transportation. Like if you want something like to and from, from the airport, you can add it. If you want um, additional tours, you can add it on. So I think the next time we do a Europe trip, I really, would really love to do like a UK, uh, Spain, and France trip. I think that would just be awesome. So I'm really hoping to do that, but I, I really do want to get to Asia first, um, to be honest, because um, I'm, I'm a boba lover. I'm an Asian food lover. Um, 
yeah i just uh, I, as much as i love the italian food i feel like i wouldn't get as tired of asian food as much that's just my personal preference but um boba tea is so cheap and they would be in abundance there and much cheaper um and yeah so japan also for sure has been a place i want to go to and my husband and i talked about it and i think we're going to be trying to go in um spring of 2023 just because as i said we do have that 16 day thailand and china trip coming up next later next year um so We'd probably have to build something like that into 2023 and we'd love to go during cherry blossom season and just kind of start planning that out um a lot of places i think it's a little too far in advance to really start building that trip um but <laughs> i want to start doing it soon um, and then you usually pay like a deposit and then like a month before your trip has to be paid off with a lot of places and i think it was tripmasters.com I think um but yeah so that's that's where we're at as far as trips um i'm just really excited just to be able to start traveling again more um it's been it's been tough like a tough past year and a half and i'm really glad that the trip happened um i know once we got back the delta variant kind of spiked again like right after things were closing down kind of more and so i think we went at like the right time um so i'm really glad we got to do it because it was kind of up in the air um and coming back let me tell you coming back from venice so we were flying back british airways and we had to do a covid test coming back into the states so that was the requirement had to get a negative covid test I'm not gonna lie a little bit nervous about it but we were you know being safe using masks all that good stuff and um so my my dad and his girlfriend um found a place where you can schedule them it was kind of a pain to be honest because the one place that did it for free had a mile long line and we just paid the 25 euros to just have it done at a pharmacy and for some reason even though we had it done at the same place as my dad and his girlfriend their test results were in english and in french and ours were in italian and french I don't know why we only got our test done half hour apart it was super strange but when we came back um you know we were you know gonna be leaving the airport and the guy was like started giving him my dad a hard time well you know there's you know theirs isn't in english and it kind of was seeming like this was gonna be a problem because <laughs> i mean even though our test result clearly read negativo like it's pretty easy to interpret that it was clearly negative they thought it would be an issue granted after this point no one checked any of that we had to go through security and fill out some covid decla declaration forms on our way out of that airport or um at our stop over in the uk because we had a, a layover in the uk and then from the uk to la and then la to san jose so we had two layer layovers coming back it was a long day but it wasn't too bad because the plane was like two-thirds empty yeah it's like two-thirds empty it was really nice for us because we got to spread out stretch out really nice when that happens it almost never happens for me i always see people like oh my my row is empty and like that never happens for me but it was really awesome like especially when you have two layovers you know that's hard enough um but anyway we we're you know leaving the airport british airways um finally the guy at the front asked his uh, co colleague about the situation and um i my impression was that he was new because she said that you know as long as it's clear that it the test result is negative then it should be fine and so it was ended up being okay but we had that initial like panic attack like oh my gosh we're not gonna get stuck in the airport right <laughs> so <laughs> that was a little bit of a concern but um yeah so it ended up being okay like at first my dad's like do you have like someone who here who speaks italian that can translate that could do this stuff but thankfully we didn't need any of that um but yeah so this is almost a month later i really wanted to get this video up for you guys just kind of telling you about my you know kind of sort of post-covid travel experience um unfortunately many places in asia still have the two-week quarantine um requirement understandably so 
um, but we're hoping that by this time next year that you know things will be much better you know with the vaccines and everything but we're just really glad that we got to go um, you know to Europe again we were all vaccinated uh, wore masks you know played it safe all that good stuff um, way overspent on food and souvenirs and all that stuff I rode a scooter for the first time while in Florence to make it a little bit easier on the feet to get around another thing if you plan on doing a lot of walking, which you probably will in these places, <laughs> because uh, they're not as reliant uh, on cars as Americans, um, invest in a good pair of walking shoes, especially if you're doing like a, you're, you know, if it's not an all-inclusive where you're on a coach most of the time, you want to get walking shoes, good walking shoes, because we spent a lot, a lot of time walking around <laughs> and my feet pretty much every single day were killing me it was, it was so bad like by the time I got back I'm like I need a foot massage like bad so <laughs> yeah invest in the walking shoes and then there was some like there wasn't too much like we went to Murano Island and um Burano Island got some really cool glass looking things. Italy is really well known for their glass products so I highly recommend if you're in Italy to you know get some Murano glass if not for you then you know maybe for a loved one. Um, really awesome opportunity we got on a boat from Venice to go to Murano Island that was fun. Um, things closed pretty early there like by like six by the time we came back from Burano to, Mo to Murano. I don't know why I keep confusing them, but um, yeah, so all that good stuff and what else? Yeah, so there were a couple of times, uh, oh, okay, another cultural difference is you will see more affection between couples, like you will see more, uh, and, and it's not like, and there it's not a big deal, like, but you will see, like, people straight up, like, making out, hugging, kissing, like, to where, like, to the point where you, you think they would need to get a room, like, a lot. Which is not a bad thing, but it's definitely, like, more culturally, culture, culturally <laughs> accepted than it is here in the States. Um, another thing is, you know, people can freely breastfeed and that's no big deal, um, you know, in public. And then another thing, <laughs> this is where I'm like, is I saw, there was an instance where my dad and his girlfriend saw a woman letting her child, I think, take a crap on the street, like pants down, literally taking like a crap on the street and pee or something like that. And then there was another instance where I saw a mom holding her child while he, there was a stream from his willy going into the ocean. Yeah, that that was not expected. <laughs> Didn't really see things like that in Germany and Austria and Switzerland too much. Yeah, but yeah, another funny thing is my dad's girlfriend. She would say uh, "gracias" instead of "grazie," <laughs> which is "thank you." I just thought it was funny. <laughs> but um, yeah, so. Um, Another tip when you're um, in a place like Italy, not so much Germany, um, but um, you can negotiate like pricing. There will be like a lot of uh, street vendors trying to get you to buy things, um, you know, and stuff like that. Try to come up to you, get you to buy things, get you to buy more things. Um, so you really do, you know, it pays to like have some negotiation skills, um, you know, and you can negotiate prices down. Um, there are some vendors who will try to take advantage of you if they see you're a tourist. Um, so, yeah, they, they see you're a tourist and will try and take advantage of you. Um, I had a guy try and sell me a Venice shirt for 25 euros. I, the only time I pay $25 or more for a shirt is if it's special made, or just, and this is just a regular logo t-shirt, or at a convention. That's where I see $25 shirts. But for the vast majority of these places, t-shirts were like eight to 10 euros or like, I don't know, three for 20 or something. Um, so like 
we just like were about to walk away like nah I ain't paying like it, the sign literally said 10 and this guy tried to tra charge me 25 so we started to walk away he's like no 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 no, no. 13 I'm like okay I still feel like we could have gotten it for a better deal but I'm like I ain't paying no 25 I really like the shirt so I paid the 13 but anyway and another thing between Rome and Florence pickpockets especially at the train station really bad that our taxi driver which the taxi drivers drive kind of crazy around there and I guess right now they're only allowed to have passengers in the back seat because of COVID and a lot of them have not plexiglass but like some plastic sheet kind of dividing um, so it was really hard to wave down a taxi to fit four people uh, just because of that because you can only sit in the back so they can only take like three and a lot of them drove really quite crazy but anyway one of them had told us had overcharged my dad anyway um, that's a story for another time that happened to us in Mexico one time too but um, had told an, a really nice driver had, had warned us about pickpockets which we kind of knew going into Italy that there were going to be pickpockets in certain places especially like in Rome um, to and then this is my advice to anyone going into Italy um, you know especially in like in the train station you want to carry your backpacks your purses things like that ideally like you know either maybe you know, if you're wearing a fanny pack I'd wear something over it so it's not easily like someone can clip it off I'd wear a jacket or something but like wear your backpacks on the front of you and this is the taxi driver his advice to us was to wear everything on front and we had several suitcases we had backpacks we had to you have to keep your your eye on everything at all times um <laughs> so you have to, yeah you have to be really diligent about keeping your eye on everything so at one point we we're eating lunch there we had all of our luggage kind of next to us a few of us had gone to the bathroom there was a lady who came up to us and she was like you know she didn't really seem to speak it much English but she kind of was like made it clear what she wanted and, and my husband's like you know no sorry kind of like go away you know because she was he's like no sorry and she kept kept standing there and a lot of times what they'll do is they'll get someone to distract you while someone else will try and grab something so you just have to be really careful about that and I feel like we were really lucky um and then going home was aside from that one airport thing was fairly seamless until we got from LA to San Jose so when we got to San Jose airport terminal for some reason American Airlines was checking the luggage or all the carry-ons at the gate and instead of printing off those little uh the labels like with your information they just kind of gave out like um like lottery tickets they kind of just you know handed you a ticket and then you, then tore off the numbers and handed it to you like a receipt so it wasn't actually something that they printed out attached to your luggage like they normally do so that was kind of weird so they took the um carry-on bags and when we came in 45 minutes later they put, they unloaded them right there in the terminal which is weird because normally whenever i've had uh, a carry-on bag checked it would normally come out with your other baggage on the terminal um so apparently my dad and this other lady had the uh, same identical luggage identical luggage and he swore while he was waiting to grab his bag that he saw someone walk off with the luggage and he's like oh maybe she has the same luggage turns out they do have the same exact luggage so when he got up there he looked at the number and realized that the lady took his luggage instead of hers and so understandably he was really upset because he had like a thousand twelve hundred dollars worth of souvenirs in there and so you know we ran to the like um to the carousel to see if we could catch her to try and you know give her to swap the bags because she left hers and took his and so american airlines i think they since rectified this but because there were some issues with like some of the charges and stuff but um they basically did not want to take any responsibility for it they're like oh well it's on you to make sure that you know the the because my dad's like why do you have this ticketing system if your employees aren't actually checking people's uh receipts to make sure they're grabbing the right bag because they weren't checking they weren't checking any of the receipts they were giving people um they're just letting people tag bags um 
<laughs> so when he got up there, you know, and they weren't taking responsibility, they're like, well, that's for you. It's just like, okay. But then that means anyone can just come up and take your stuff. Like if, I mean, what's the point of it if they're not going to check? Because, you know, you know, even if you're diligent and you check, that doesn't mean the other person's not going to check like this, like this lady, um, even though it was not a mistake, but he was really upset, like opened their luggage. They couldn't find anything to identify her. Um, you know, we were there for like 20 minutes, like he was really upset. And so our taxi driver <laughs> was waiting and, um, you know, he and my dad have to, had to leave his information for the airport because I guess they couldn't figure out who it was that walked off with his luggage because again, they didn't really give tags that, you know, had people's information on it like they do with your checked luggage or anytime they do normally check your carry-on bags. So <laughs> we went home and this is kind of what I figured would happen because, you know, this lady, he, my dad had hella souvenirs, like she had this more like clothes, some clothes in there. Um, but this person would be honest and return the bag, <laughs> um, which they were. Um, the, you know, my dad called American Airlines super early the next day because we had gotten in, gotten in around midnight. So he called them um, really early the next day and, um, you know, to basically explain the situation. I guess since then when they, they kind of went through the woman's luggage and had found a name that they eventually traced back to the passenger's daughter or something that was on there. So then they arranged a time to meet up and swap the bags. So they did get a hold of the person <laughs> because I'm like, someone's gonna be missing their luggage. So it was interesting. And then the next day, we were a little bit jet lag. It was hard for me to go to sleep, but um, we did drive home to Sacramento the next day. So that was our trip. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I know it was a little bit long. If I, you know, can, I'll insert some montage. So, you know, I hope this like just kind of helps you with plan for future trips, learn from our mistakes. Each experience is different. You always learn something, even though I aim to be as prepared as I can. But there's all, you know, there's always hiccups on a trip. Um, so. That was my Italy trip. I had a great time overall. So I hope you guys just enjoy this video of me just talking about my trip and you know tips and tricks and all that fun stuff. Hope you're entertained by it. But yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. Please don't forget to like and subscribe. Give me a big thumbs up if you enjoyed my content. Yeah, I would super appreciate it. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye. Pizza for breakfast. In Italy, they have pizza for breakfast. Mm. Their version of the Which one did you get, Bell? The latte macchiato or something? Would you get it? Yeah, you're saying this. Oh, I'm going to try it. If it gets too dark.